Pretty soon, I am headed to California for an amazing week of photography. I'm going to be going to San Francisco, places like the Redwoods, and even Yosemite National Park. So I'm pretty darn excited. And I'm going to be bringing a lot of camera gear to capture the wildlife and the landscapes of this beautiful state in the best way possible. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the gear that I use, that I will use in California to capture these images. So let's just get into it. Um, and I feel like this is a cliche thing to say, but gear is and everything, uh, but it definitely does help. So that's what I'm going to be showing you today. Um, and this is exclusively for nature photography for you new viewers out there. So I do landscapes and wildlife, um, no portraits or anything. You know, I might take some snapshots on my phone for portrait wise, but, um, I'm pretty much exclusively nature. So let's just get into the first item here. So. The first thing is the camera bag, of course, and this is a little bit big for my secondary camera view, but it's the Mindshift Backlight 26L. It is a great camera bag. I have no complaints. Fits all my gear perfectly, even my big wildlife lens fully extended, and it is just great. Um, it's, I have no complaints about it. It's got great places to connect your tripod, great pockets, uh, great accessories. It's just great. I love this bag. Um, I'm not, I might do a dedicated review of this bag, so I'm not going to get into too much specifics, um, just to keep this video length down a bit, but it is just a purely great bag and it's, uh, it has good supports. It's got back straps and, um, uh, hip straps. So it really allows you to not feel the weight just on your back when you're hiking. And I will be doing a lot of hiking on this trip. So that is very, very important. So that is the bag that's going to be holding all this gear you will see in today's video. So the first thing that I keep in this bag is a rain cover. And this actually came from Mindshift itself. And it's it's really a great cover. I've rarely used it. I've actually never used it in the field, strangely enough. Um, but I have tested it at home. It fits around the camera bag like a glove. And it stays in this nice little compartment, as you can see here. It just opens up and you can just deploy it around your bag. Um, I'm sure it will come in handy in California as it's the rainy season there. So there will be a lot of rain and it will be very convenient to have this. Moving on, just another kind of general thing I keep in my bag. Basically a sandbag for your tripod or a rock bag. So you can put rocks in this to weight it down. So my tripod does not have one of those things that you could clip a camera bag from so you could in order to weight it down so this serves that purpose um, I can attach that my tripod and I'll show my tripod later but this is what I use to attach to my tripod to put um, something to weigh it down in um, it's also very convenient if you just need to transfer gear and maybe hold something um, say you're doing a lens change you can drop the lens in there while you're switching lenses it's very convenient Next thing we have is a camera strap, and I will say um, I'm using this less and less, but it will be convenient while traveling. Um, it's a Peak Design one, so I've got like a uh, capture clip system on my camera, so these clip right into the camera capture clip, um, and it's very, very convenient. Uh, it's a great strap, very strong. It's made with a seatbelt-like material, so it's not going to break. It's, it's pretty much impossible, I would say. Uh, so it's very convenient, packs down fairly small, um, and it's much better for your normal camera straps. I would definitely recommend, if you haven't already, to quickly, quickly, um, you know, change to those uh, more designed, more well-designed uh, camera straps. The next item we have is uh, Apple SD card reader. Um, this is very necessary because... I am not bringing a computer on this trip. So uh, say one morning I get up early and get an amazing sunrise shot of El Capitan. I'm not going to want to trust my SD cards um, to save that image because, you know, occasionally they do fail, um, especially since I only have one card slot on my camera. Thanks, Canon. Um, but anyway, since I only have one card slot, I do like to have this just so I can back up my favorite images. Now, I don't back up all my images. I just back up my favorite RAW files. I save them in a Google Drive folder, so they are in the cloud as well. So it's kind of like a double backup kind of thing. Um, and that just gives me a little bit of peace of mind. Um, and I will also switch SD cards too, um, but I'll get into that later. 
but this is just a good way to ensure that you don't have any disasters with your uh, devices uh, w or with my raw files on this trip because if I lost a lot of raw files, I would be crushed because um, that's one of the main goals of going on this trip in the first place is the photography. So this is definitely essential. Um, it just plugs into my phone. It's used to be very clunky to import, but nowadays they've really streamlined it um, and it, it works, works really well. So I'll definitely be using that. All right, next up we have my tripod accessory kit um and tripods uh they have a lot of accessories you know so i like to carry this little bag um it has everything i need uh for tripod stuff in here and of course i'll get into my tripod later but let me show you what's in the bag so first of all can't go anywhere without this you have a really right stuff multi-tool um it's very essential it's got an allen key and kind of a screwdriver head on it um, as well as an easy, easily clippable thing, so you could put it on your bag. Um, it's very convenient. This is my extra one. I actually have another one mounted on my camera bag, um, and that's from Leo Photo, and it works just as well. It also has another tool built in. So it's, it's really nice, really convenient, um, and it just works really well. So it's a lot better than carrying around a bunch of mini ones. Uh, so yeah, they're very nice. Um, I also do have, just in case, I have one just general Allen key in there, um, just so I can make sure I don't lose anything. Uh, I have an extra lens cloth in here, just in case. Um, I try to keep this as my tripod lens cloth, so maybe not as sensitive of areas to clean off, but, you know, in case I do need to do some cleaning. Um, I also have spikes, so I'm going to be working around sand a lot, so... Uh, these can be put on the feet of my Leo photo tripod, which I'll show later. Um, and they help stick right into the sand or um, any kind of marshy environment. So you don't get that sink if you're trying to do a long exposure on your tripod. So I'll definitely be using these. It's pretty easy. I just unscrew the current feet of my tripod and place these on. Um, and I find they work very well. So, and this just came with a tripod, which was really nice as well. So that is my tripod kit. Um, next up, we've got some power stuff. So, um, let's start with the batteries. So I carry uh, a total of four batteries. One is always in my camera and I got three other ones. So I have one official Canon battery extra. Um, as you can see, it's labeled two on there. And I also have two Wasabi power backup batteries. These don't last quite as long, but they're reliable. Um, I trust this brand and I use this on my previous camera as well. They work really well. Um, so here's what they look like. Um, I've just got them labeled and it's very nice. And I keep them in uh, this little container. I got this up off Amazon. Um, it's pretty good. It's got holes on the side, so occasionally they fall out. So not perfect, but I try to save money where I can. Um, and it, it works pretty darn well. Um, as, as far as the chargers for that, I keep them in another little case just so everything doesn't move around. Now, if I'm in my hometown and I'm just doing a trip, I won't use all these cases. But when I travel, I like to have separate cases just in case. So inside of this bag, I got a car adapter for one of my chargers. So this is just in case I need to charge on the road. It's really nice to have. Um, I've got the, the uh, charger for my Wasabi power batteries. This also works for my main Canon LPE 17 batteries. So that's nice. Um, and then I've got my main Canon charger. So I've got two chargers for two batteries. So that works pretty well. Um, unfortunately, these cannot take the third party batteries, um, but it's still good to have two chargers out in the field for sure. Next, we have my SD cards, which are really important. Um, they basically store the data uh, from my camera. You guys know what an SD card is, but um, just in case you don't, um, I keep it in this nice little ProMaster case. It folds up here. It has space for um, XQD or CF cards, which I don't use. And then at the bottom, there's space for some SD cards. So in my camera right now, I've got a uh, Osprey uh, SD card, 64 gigabytes, UHS-2. Um, this is my main card, so I have two of those. So I've got an extra one in here as well. Um, and I like to switch between those two as my main card since they are UHS-2. So they will write much faster to my camera. They've got the extra contacts on the back, as you can see. Um, as 
well, I have a SanDisk Extreme Extreme Pro UHS-1 SD card, which is almost as fast. Um, so this will be the third one I would use in California. So I'll probably use all three, even if I don't fill up all three, just so if I if one of the cards fails, I won't lose all my photos from the trip. And as a ultimate backup, I've got a four gigabyte SanDisk card. Now on my camera, this will only hold about 20 photos, but you know, it's good to have just in case uh, two of the other cards happen to fail. So I've got this, um, that makes it a total of four cards. Uh, so it's very convenient and I know I won't run out of storage out there. In worst case, if I do happen to fill up all the cards, I can just transfer all of them over to my phone. I've got plenty of storage um, and delete some of the cards. All right, uh, next up, we've got cleaning accessories. So first of all, I've got this air blower. And every serious photographer, especially nature, I would suggest you get an air blower. It's very powerful. It gets the dust off of the camera lenses. Um, even the elements and most importantly your camera sensor. So for most of the dust on your sensor uh, Some of it is pretty bad and you'll have to actually swab it But for most of it it can just be dusted off with this and This is especially important for mirrorless shooters like me because we don't have a mirror to block our sensors So we get an incredible amount of dust and especially since I'm gonna be shooting a lot of landscapes Those dust spots can really show up in the skies. So I really really have to be careful so I'll be using this air blower a lot. I'll probably use it at least once a day in order to make sure there's no dust anywhere. Um, and I'm, you know, it's kind of weird to carry. It's got a weird shape. Like it doesn't fit in my bag well, but I have to carry it. So yeah. Um, also I've got uh, two extra lens cloths. One is from Breakthrough Photography. I like the quality of theirs. And one's from Polar Pro. Uh, it came with my ND filters. Uh, so I've got two extra ones. Uh, they're pretty nice. They work well, you know. Lens cloths are lens cloths. They're the they're the microfiber format, so they're really efficient at cleaning off camera lenses. And they're pretty much the preferred uh, cleaning solution for photographers. Also on my camera bag, I have an additional lens cloth that is attached to the side. I can't really show it to you right now because I'm actually having trouble getting it off, but it works really well. Um, and it's just kind of good for on the go cleaning. All right, so let's move on to filters. So I've got a pretty decent amount of filters. I keep it in this MindShift filter kit. So it's the same brand that my bag is made from. Um, so it really works well. Uh, so inside of this bag, uh, I also keep some lens caps. So I've got a uh, extra Canon, uh, this is a 77, Miller, 77 millimeter lens cap. Um, this is for my 16 to 35 lens. And then I've got a 72 millimeter lens cap for my 24 to 240 lens. Um, I use step up rings on those lenses, uh, as you'll see in a minute. So um, that's why I have the extra lens caps when I'm not using the step up rings in this filter kit. Also in the filter kit, I've got a circular polarizer filter. Um, I believe this is the Chris Picard series from Polar Pro. I haven't used this as much as I would have wanted. Um, I've just been shooting a lot of wildlife. Uh, this spring, uh, but I'm going to use this a lot in California. Uh, it'll probably be on my lens most of the time for walk around stuff to just polarize the scene nicely. And I'll definitely use it for some of those daytime landscapes um, that don't require a filter. So this is great. Um, I love this filter, high quality and everything. Um, so I also have a six stop um, indie polarizer from Polar Pro. So this has a built in polarizer plus a six stop ND. This is the first filter I ever had and it's carried me through some great long exposures. Um, it's good for waterfall photography I find because it doesn't give you too long of a shutter speed. Um, it usually during the day gives you around that one second to two second range, um, but it's not a horrible amount of darkness. So this is kind of my most used filter um, and that nice polarizer also being built in is great. Um, another one of my recent filters is the 10 stop. So this is kind of really an artistic kind of filter for me. So if I ever want to, um, you know, kind of make an extreme blur, make that water nice and crystal clear, or get a longer exposure during the day, this is what I'll use. As you can see, it's extremely dark, so you can barely see through it. Um, you really can't, actually. Um, and it's got some polarization factor to it as well. 
Um, and it's by Polar Pro as well. I really like the Polar Pro filters. I decided not to go uh, for a glass filter system. I wanted to go for a circular because it's a lot more mobile. And I really like the products. So, yeah, uh, that's my filter kit. And now let's move on to the part you guys are all waiting for, the camera and lenses. So let's start with the camera. This is the Canon EOS RP. So this is the entry-level uh, mirrorless full-frame camera in the EOS R mount. Um, it's about two and a half years old at this point. Um, man, it is a great camera. Not enough people use this, but I love this camera. Oh my gosh, I just I can go on and on about it. I use it for wildlife, I use it for landscapes, I use it for everything. This is my only camera body, besides a film camera. But this is my only digital body, um, 26 megapixels, uh, four or five frames per second for wildlife. That isn't fast, but it works for me. Uh, decent autofocus, um, great dynamic range, great sharpness, great colors, great handling. I just love how it feels. I've got the extension grip on it as well. Um, it's got perfect controls, great custom modes. Um, I just cannot say enough about this camera. I just love it. Um, as you can tell, it's got, it's a mirrorless camera. So it's got the electronic viewfinder in the back as well as a very nice flippy screen, um, which is very convenient for my photography. Um, mounted on the camera, I've got an L brackets. Uh, so this allows me to do bo both vertical and horizontal uh, compositions for my landscape photography. Uh, this is by three-legged thing as well. So it's, it's really nice um, and it fits on my camera pretty well. Um, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with this camera uh, for landscapes. I have no complaints. You know, it's not perfect for wildlife, um, but it works for me. I get great images. Um, the image behind me here is taken on this camera. In fact, um, it's got a full frame sensor. I don't know if I mentioned, uh, which is really nice. So it's entry level, but it is still full frame. So I can get that nice low light performance, uh, shoot some great Astro stuff with this. And it's just really a great camera. So let's move on to lenses. So for my main landscape lens, um, I'm gonna be using the 16 to 35 F4. Man, this is a great lens. Definitely the sharpest lens I've ever used. Um, it is just amazing. The F4 aperture is perfect for me too. I don't need F2.8 on a wide angle. I just don't, that's the fact. So I went with the F4 version. Um, it's got an image stabilizer, uh, great autofocus, um, and I use it on the adapter, of course, because it is an EF lens, so I mount it to my RF camera, so um, yeah, it works well. Uh, it's weather sealed, and it even maintains weather sealing with the adapter, so uh, this is probably the lens I'll take out the most if it's raining. Um, and on the front, I've got a step-up ring from Breakthrough Photography, and that's just so I can uh, mount my filter on here. Um, so I can use the filters on all three of my lenses so I can step up to the 82 millimeter size to put those filters on here. Um, I love this lens. No complaints. 16 is a great focal length. Um, I really have found myself shooting a lot around the 16 to 20 range recently for my landscapes. Um, and I'll definitely be shooting a lot in Yosemite, um, the Redwoods and just a lot in general. It's a great walk around lens too. So this is Probably my favorite lens. I love it. Great sharpness. It's L series too. Um, actually, my first L series, well, second L series lens, but it's my only L series lens lens I own right now. Next up, we've got the 24 to 240. I will say this is not a very sharp lens. It produces good enough results for social media, but I'm not always happy with the print quality. Um, but nevertheless, it covers a great focal range and. I do not have an unlimited budget. So for now, this is kind of the best that I've got. Um, it covers that range past my 1635 all the way out to 200 millimeters. So this is kind of my telephoto and medium lens. Um, it's f4 to 6.3, which is a perfectly fine aperture for me. I pretty much use this lens exclusively for landscapes. Um, it is really a great lens. It's not as sharp as the 16 to 35, what I said, like I said, but it is very acceptable. And only like pixel peepers will notice that there's a little bit of a problem. Um, there is a decent amount of chromatic aberration, but it can be pretty much corrected in Lightroom. Um, it's got a nice control ring because it is an RF lens. Um, it zooms out pretty fast. Uh, it's got a stabilizer. It's, it's a very versatile focal length. 22 to 240 is really a big range. So um, it's another great travel lens too. 
even when someday I'll probably upgrade to a 24 to 70 and 7200, I'll probably still keep this lens around for travel since it's just so convenient. Um, on the front, I've got a step up ring as well um, to use the filters because um, of course I do use them a lot on my telephoto as well. Um, so I'll be able to get some really nice mountain texture shots, trees, um, just everything really on this lens and I'm really excited. All right, so now time for the big behemoth of a lens. We've got the 600 f11. Now, I, I know you heard f11 for wildlife, but you know this works great. And like I said, this is my main wildlife lens. Um, it compacts down really small. It's great for travel. So I can just take off the hood um, and I just pull out like this. And there is the full size of the lens. Um, it's great. You know, if you have it in good light, it is at only f11, but if you have it in good light, you won't notice much difference from a 600 f4, really. Uh, great quality, great sharpness. I love this lens. Great handling. It's got a control ring. It's nice and light. Um, I can hand hold it. I like using it on a tripod better, but hand holding is very, very possible. It's got a great, great image stabilizer, which makes hand holding that much better. Um, and it's just really a great lens, and I'll definitely keep this most for even after I might upgrade someday um, just because for travel it's just great it gets so small like I said you can just kind of fold it up like this and then reverse the lens hood and it just fits right in my bag very easily um, it also even fits fully extended in my bag which is also really good um, and it's just a really great lens like people underestimate it they always go right for the 800 but I think 600 is a really unique focal length it's long enough for birds and definitely long enough for some of the deer and bears and other things I'll be encountering in California. Um, so I'm very excited to use this lens. Um, this will probably be what the majority of my wildlife is shot on. Um, and at the bottom here, I've got a tripod, tripod, um, a base plate on here just so I can put it on my tripod. Um, and yeah, it's just a great lens. And uh, it will be kind of rainy in California, so to cover my camera, I've got this plastic bag. Um, and I actually draped this over the camera in order to ensure that there isn't water on it. So it works. Uh, I'm not going to buy a rain cover. Too expensive. Um, so that's what I'm working with for this trip. And finally, last but not least, we got the tripod. So this is a Lee, Leo Photo um, LH325C plus LH40 ball head. It is a great tripod setup, nice strong ball head, nice strong legs. Um, it's very compact too, so it's got four sections to kind of make it more compact. Um, and it actually can get really tall, like uh, six and a half feet actually, so it's great. Um, smooth rotations, um, no center column, which is really nice. So if I want to get those low angle shots on the beach or something, um, I can do that. Uh, and it just fits all my cameras well, even my wildlife lens. Uh, I prefer using my gimbal, but for uh, size restrictions, um, I'm going to just be bringing the tripod, um, the, the ball head, but it works great for that, works great for my landscapes, um, and it's just my favorite tripod I've ever owned. Uh, carbon fiber, uh, nice and compact, fairly lightweight at only five pounds, uh, stable as heck, and it just works great. So this is going to be my one and only tripod for the trip. Um, and I just attach it to the side of my camera bag, and it's perfect. I even carry it sometimes. And uh, I've got the normal feet on there right now, and I showed you the spikes earlier, so I can easily switch those out for different scenarios. So that is my camera gear. Um, I'm very excited to use all this to capture some hopefully great images in California. Um, I'm going to be grading great shots of El Capitan, uh, Glacier Point, all these kind of views in Yosemite. Um, I'm going to be capturing the unique redwoods of uh, California. I'm going to be getting some seascapes with the sea stacks and the different rocks of the Pacific Ocean. So I'm just really excited. Um, I'm just, I've never been to an area like this. So I'm really excited to capture unique images and really build my portfolio. Photography is definitely my main focus on this trip. Um, so I'm going to dedicate most of my time to it. Um, and I, I just want to say um, before I end the video here, I'll probably not have a video next week because I'll still be on the trip. Um, but definitely after that, you can expect a very nice recap video kind of going over some of the images of the trip. Um, probably multiple videos, I would I would guess, uh, depending on how much content I get. 
Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, I'll let you know how the gear performed too. Um, and yeah, uh, so thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing my gear. I've never really showed all of it before. I've done reviews on some of these things, I know. Um, but a lot of it is new and a lot of it is just I've never talked about combined before. So I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.